Hi, welcome to Code Rage 2019. My name is Larry Hingen, and I've been a Delphi developer since Delphi 2 shipped, which makes me a senior developer, but by age only. Today I wanted to introduce you to a tool that I've been working on to help facilitate the usage of the Object Persistent Framework that I authored and released open source on SourceForge in 2009 called ACOPF. Uh, the tool ACOPF CodeGen is a tool that allows you to actually generate objects for use in that object persistent framework. So to give you some background, I started developing this framework in around the time frame of Delphi 7 when I realized that dataset based applications of any complexity become a maintenance nightmare over time. I found that data was often stale and inconsistent in a database application because each view was tied to a different data set and there was no way to know when the data had to be refreshed. As a result, unnecessary refreshes were often performed causing the applications to be very chatty with the backend relational database server. Also validation logic tended to be implemented in the UI forms and so over time as the business rules changed it became difficult to ensure consistent correct validation. Using objects to model the real world is a much more intuitive approach. Many developers using Java and other technologies were using ORMs, so I started working on one myself. And along the way, I borrowed up ideas from those ORMs. I wanted a framework that provided the encapsulation of data and objects, making applications easier to maintain over time. Encapsulation is one of the three pillars of object-oriented development, polymorphism, inheritance, and encapsulation. And encapsulation gives you the advantage that to add a new attribute to a business object, you only have to modify the class that that attribute becomes available throughout the entire application, wherever an instance of that class is used. Contrast that to a dataset based application where you would have to modify practically every form and query or dataset where the new column should appear. Missing places or not providing validation when that column was editable was very easy to do. So in 2009 I released HCOPF on SourceForge and you can find it quite easily if you go to SourceForge and search for HCOPF. It was originally released as Larry Hingen's OPF and that's why the URL reflects that. But it's still quite easy to find. So this framework was authored around the time of Delphi 7 and we didn't have extended RTTI back, available back then. RTTI was only available for published properties. So I chose to implement the framework using an ancestor object called THC object. And THC object descendants know how to persist themselves to the database via factory and that persistence is defined through metadata. It's the mapping is in metadata in code. And it can be rather laborious and error prone to write that code. Because metadata describes the mapping to the tables or multiple tables. And if you don't know the framework, it can be a little daunting to create these metadata definitions. Even if you do know the framework, creating it can be a tedious and error prone aff affair. I use the copy paste modify approach but that doesn't take into account the data type that the data access layer uses for a column resulting in lots of additional changes needed and, and those changes are only discovered at runtime. For these reasons I decided to create a code generator tool, ACOPF CodeGen. The code generator will currently scaffold an object definition but it needs lots of improvements. This is just a first cut. I'm still working out all the use cases. For now it should just help save time by generating a basic definition that can be further customized as needed. I'm in the process of removing old dependencies but currently the project requires the JVCL, Virtual Tree View, and HEOPF. Now for a quick demonstration of the code generator. So I've checked it into 
the sourceforge.net SVN repository under source HC OPF CodeGen. The projects exist there as well, but they're just for Delphi Rio 10.3.3 currently. But you can easily create a dproj from the DPR for earlier versions of Delphi if you want. And so essentially, the code generator is a wizard. It uses the JV wizard, as you can see by the UI here. And it uses the virtual tree view for one of the views and the JVCL for other controls. And if you run it, you define a connection against the database that you're targeting for your HCOPF objects. Um, you can create a new one through this dialog, specifying the factory class that you want, which is essentially the database connection. I've chosen FireDAC for the one that I've defined, and then you enter in a semicolon delimited connection string and a name. Click OK, it'll add it to the list and make it the default. I've already defined one for this database connection that I'm using here, and it is a Firebird 3.04 database using FireDAC as the DAO. So if you go next, it gives you an opportunity to put in a SQL statement. You could also select a table. The wizard doesn't have that pathway currently, but that's something I intend on introducing. But for now, you enter in a select statement. And it's getting the first row here, but it's using top n, which works for SQL Server, but doesn't work for Firebird. So I'm going to change this to first, and then I don't have that table in this particular database, but I have this one. If you enter in an incorrect table name and try and go to the next step in the wizard, it will tell you that the SQL it is not valid because the database will throw an exception. In this case, we go next, and we see the columns in that table, and the data types that FireDAC has used in bringing those back, and the attribute names that we've assigned are identical to the column names, but you can, in fact, change them if you wish. And then the attributes also use the same data type by default as the FireDAC layer, but you can change it, and in some cases that makes sense. But normally the default is fine. And these are mapped to actual HC attributes um, by the OPF layer. And for strings and blobs and other such columns, there is a maximum length that is applicable, and you can change that here as well. And then there's attribute properties. Attribute properties are used by the OPF framework for a variety of purposes, basically to direct it whether or not to persist the fields, whether it's read-only, computed, whether it's a fetch-on-demand, lazy loading in other words. It could be stored and computed in the database. It can also be derived from other fields, and it can be generated on insert, or you can tell it not to persist this field at all. Um, so you can select any of those that you want, hit next, it gives you the object class name, which defaults to T plus the table name. I don't like underscores in mine. You can generate a calc object skeleton. A calc object was a single object in which is deferred a calculation for the, any given object in a list. And generally that's an older way of dealing with it. Um, the better approach is to use attribute change events to trigger calculations, much more efficient and atomic. Um, you can also generate a typed list, either a parented list, if this list is going to be a child of a, another HC object descendant, or just a straight list, THC object list, and you can specify the primary table and then whether or not the table is read-only, updatable, and so on. And if you click Next, you can generate it to a unit, which uses a predefined file name, UN plus the class name, without the T, or you can generate it that unit to the clipboard. 
in this case generate it to the clipboard and if I fire up say notepad plus plus and I create replace this with the contents of the clipboard and you'll see that we have a complete HC object definition with a register method all the attributes are defined this code now can be compiled into a project for usage you can also flesh out and change definitions and add validators which is an important aspect of the framework at some point in the near future I hope to support validators because objects without validation are not as useful as they could be so that's in short HCOPF CoGen. I hope if you are looking at the framework HCOPF for persistence that you find the CoGen beneficial.